Hey, it's JC1424 once again with another Top 10, and this is going to be the famous Top 10 Songs of 2020. 2020. Sucky year. The suckiest of all years for the entire world in a long, long time. But the music well, was all pretty damn good. I think we've had better music in past years, at least from my perspective, I've liked you know my other top tens and the music that was in them more than this one. Maybe this one will grow on me. But at number ten, we've got "Brighter Side of Gray" by Five Finger Death Punch. When the lights go down. Mentally, Ivan Moody has really been through a lot in recent years. And this song actually reminds me of Leave Out All the Rest by Lincoln Park. And that came out in 2007. Oh my god, 2007 was 13 years ago. I was in like third grade. And I guess I still look like I'm in third grade. I'm wearing a Pizza Planet shirt, Toy Story. My, my sister got me this for Christmas, like I think 2019. But I, I bring all this up about um, Ivan Moody and Lincoln Park is because Chester Bennington committed suicide in 2017, and I get the vibes from the song that I got from Leave Out All the Rest, which is another song that I really, really love. I love the whole album that song is from, Minutes to Midnight. And I worry for Ivan Moody. Although I've not really liked Five Finger Death Punch's music nearly as much as Linkin Park, that is not at all reason for me to not be concerned about his well-being and um, his life. You know, I, I wish him well. But the electric and acoustic guitars mesh so well on this song, and it creates an angsty but calm combo. And I can't lie, I really enjoyed their new album, F8, or Fate, as it can otherwise be said. It's, it was like literally their best album in over eight years. And at number nine, we have a song from a band that used to go by a different name until a member decided to leave so he could, you know, do other things with his life and, and family matters, from what I've heard. This was a band that I was and still am a huge fan of. I, I love everything they made. And their name was Red Sun Rising. So Red Sun Rising broke up this year. I'm telling you, 2020 was one fucked up year. And that was before everything else, Red Sun Rising broke up. That, that was the moment where I knew, oh no, that's it. That, that did it for me. I, I would rather go through all this other shit and Red Sun Rising still be together. I, I swear. Oh. But at, at number nine, Smile Like a Hostage by The Violent. This is a beautifully layered new metal slash alt rock twist with a sweet ambience to match the theme. And conceptually, manipulation isn't a topic that's often toyed with lyrically in people's music these days. At number eight, you already knew a song by this band was gonna be in the video because the picture was in the thumbnail. It's Genocidal Humanoids by System of a Down after 15 years. Long we waited. They made a couple songs to bring awareness and, and raise funds to support those affected by terrorism back at home. This song is rapid, angry, intense, and passionate as fuck. But I do want to say this. I wish Azerbaijan, Armenia, Turkey, Syria, would find a peaceful solution. Or if they're gonna have some kind of war, it, they find a solution that doesn't involve the, affecting the, the citizens. Because it, it, war is military versus military of a country. I mean, it shouldn't be the military of one country versus the citizens of another. Because the citizens of one country are no different than the citizens of the other country. It, that, that's just stupid. And at number seven, we have a song from an artist that I've never really paid that much attention to, but I knew of them because a friend of mine, or a cousin of mine, was talking about artists that are led by Maynard James Keenan, who sings for Tool and A Perfect Circle. And the band Pussifer released an album this year, and so at number seven, I've got Bread and Circus. Four. They're a much less popular name than Tool or A Perfect Circle, and I'm, I find it quite strange 
because they've released so much more music as of recent. And they started in like 2007 or 2008, so it's been 12 or 13 years, and they put out, I think, four studio albums and then maybe a couple EPs or whatever. It's just way more music than both of the other artists. Now, Maynard James Keenan, he has a pretty big reputation, and this isn't exactly rock music. It's so many different kinds of music, and electronic, and, and synthetic. There's some organic stuff in there, obviously, like the drums and the, the guitar stuff. The singing isn't, you know, auto-tuned like freaking crazy all over the damn place. But this one is collective and well-orchestrated in sound design. And that's what I mean. Like, they use so many damn instruments, and it's, it's just very collective. They just use anything they can come up with. And this one is simultaneously relaxing and exciting, the whole movement of it. You got the album, and this starts it off, and I was sold from the very first song, so I'm attached to this one. I don't know if I exactly like any other songs there more than this one, but I had to pick one, and this is always the first one I come up with because it was the one that got me. But the whole album is just like this uh, meditative experience. Because while it's relaxing, you know, you get to feel different kinds of things you don't usually hear in rock music. And because it's coming from um, Maynard James Keenan, it, it is more creative than most stuff that would even come from like this genre. I was thinking of Phil Collins and uh, Tame Impala, who I haven't listened to that much, but I know their sound and everything. And it's some kind of mixture of that, but it is a little rocky too. Now, this song opens up a discussion of how much consumer culture has taken over the, the, the capitalism of our country's nature, I guess. Because you go know, through all the advertising and everything, it's like they decide um, what we do and don't appeal to, or what appeals to us. Because they just change that and they say, so like, these are the options instead of showing other options that we would like, and so we only think of these ones that they show us. And at number six, we've got The Unknown. By ten years. We this song passes by like a comment, but there's just no bullshit here. It goes you know, from point A to B to C to D. It doesn't do the same thing over and over again to lengthen the duration of the song and keep it going longer. You got vocals that resonate smoothly over a piano, and then it all just sonically bursts whenever it gets to the chorus. It's just like fireworks. And looking back after this entire year, it was just one unpredictable event after another. And the message learned after it all is... Uh, I don't fucking know. Hold on. I guess that's what I can infer from this song. But at number five... We have a song from a band that I recently found out had gotten back together. Um, they were really famous back in the 90s amongst other grunge artists, and that is Bush, with the song from their new album, The Kingdom, Flowers on a Grave. It's like that feeling of angrily squeezing a rose in your hand and letting the thorns pierce your skin. Now that sounds like very emo and I could be talking about Daredevil or some depressing freaking movie like that, but it, it's that kind of agony that this uh, song is trying to encapsulate, obviously. It's written about the course of emotion that you feel during internal conflict due to loss and or defeat. And it helps greatly that the guitar chords on this song are just a freaking slam dunk. The guitar solo in here is, it just comes in in such a euphoric fashion. At number four, we have a song from an artist that, I think their last album was 2018, and that would mean that they could possibly be releasing something next year, if not definitely 2022, and that is Atlas Falls by Shinedown. a magnificent power ballad and Brent Smith just lets loose his soul to the point where it audibly shines. And I guess it's where they got the name Shine Down, but I'm, I'm probably wrong about that, so don't listen to my stupid ass. The string section here is so elegant. The percussion creates a lot of excitement and there's this tremendous ending that is sung in rounds because you've got the chorus, the lines for that, and he's singing that, and then it's like it's taking turns back and forth with what he has in the bridge. And it just builds up until finally it, um, it explodes for a nice theatrical ending. And we have songs that end in, um, you know, singing in rounds or, you know, that, that theatrical style coming up later on in this list. And we're getting close to the end of it. So I like that artists are 
taking this path in music and making it work. Because usually they just kind of do it and it might not even sound that well. But I find this to be the most effectively optimistic song for me released this year. At number three, we have a song from an artist that was the, the first band that I ever knew the name of. Except for maybe Nickelback. I don't know which one I learned first. But she released... Um, a new song this year, she's released like four songs this year, and I guess she's doing a one at a time for her album, which is going to come out next year, obviously. And that is Evanescence, with the lead single, Wasted On You. I don't need drugs, I'm no, on you. you can tell that a lot of the sound design was adapted from Synthesis and onto their signature hard rock sound with this song in particular. Uh, Synthesis was an album, or a project rather, that was released in 2017 and it was rehashed electronic and symphonic versions of songs they'd had over the years. There were a couple of new songs though, of course, Imperfection, which is just great, and then High Low as well. I haven't listened to High Low in a long time, I'm not even that familiar with it, but I, I think I might remember how it goes. But Amy Lee's voice varies between a delicate vibrato and then a sturdy forte in this song. You got the timing of the guitar chords and the drum lead-ins, which is just so immaculate. Not to mention the bridge and the ending are just chilling here. And I said about the last song, and I'm going to say about the next song, the one after that. It's just they all do this thing where they take the bridge that comes in and it collides with the final chorus and the, the, the outro. It could be theatrical or just sonic and it, exciting and everything just comes together and that's something that I really like in music. I will say that I'm worried about the next Evanescence album with the three other songs that came out after this one because the guitar recordings with them being more focused on rock music I notice how much the guitar recordings are just shit. Like you know you have a guitar which is a treble instrument and you got the bass which is a bass instrument but you should not take the guitar recording and then dump like oatmeal all over it so that it, it sounds all mushy and stinky. And you don't really notice it that much on Wasted On You because there's just so much instrumentation and a variety of things going on in the song. At number two, we have a song from an artist that used to just be a really weird YouTuber, a, a robot-like person. And they decided they were going to start making music. And I was like, okay, this is pretty good. It's, it's not my thing. And then they started experimenting and... They're their own musician. They're, they're doing their absolute own thing, and I love it. We've got Don't Go Outside by Poppy. From my favorite album of the year, I Disagree, which is short, but packed with creative, heavy industrial metal. This song in particular is a medley that I'd only fantasized about prior, to be honest. It's a progressive metal opera. I mean, we'd have metal opera with Vince Sevenfold, and then rock operas from Queen and Green Day. I was about to say Bohemian Rhapsody, but that is not the name of the band. That Oh, my God. Uh, you know, My Chemical Romance, and, and then Tool, and then Progressive Rock. It's like you take all that and... Everything is just, just like based off of other things on the album, and then it's got its own thing to decide how the album's going to end. And it ties everything up so very well. Poppy has such a silky voice. Now, not everyone's going to like it, but the way it comes in with the acoustic guitar on this track is... Oh my god, it's, it's elegant. I've probably used that word before, but that's, that's the word. It, it's, it's silky and elegant. It's not exactly creepy like it is in like her old videos or whatever, though she, I think she still does that stuff and it's, it's kind of funny at this point. But the musicianship from the band is just so on point with great choices of instrumentation and an unspeakable performance on those instruments. Now, before I go telling you guys what number one is, you're probably not even going to be able to guess it. We're going to give you guys some honorable mentions. I find it kind of strange that 
a year and a half ago, summer of 2019, me and my girlfriend Kayla, we went and saw these guys live. And you know, they were there doing that right then. And this came after that. So it makes this seem like it's in the future. I'm listening to, to the, the future of these guys. Because usually whenever you listen to them, it's always in the past. Like it is 20 years ago, 10 years ago, or maybe just a few months ago, but it's never, it's like right then and there. Like you're listening to them actually making the music and doing the music. And that's, that's what it was whenever we saw them live. But that, that makes this seem like it was in the future for some reason. But yeah, this is a nostalgic outro song from an otherwise forgettable album. I really loved New Wave, but I can't even remember what the name of their new album is. I always forget. And usually if I like it, then I don't have a problem with it. There's some albums that I don't like that I can remember the name of, but it's like, it's not good whenever it's forgettable, okay? That, that's, that's probably the worst place to be in. Then we've got 30 by Bad Flower, a band that I should have taken the opportunity to see live I think at the beginning of this year, whenever they were in New Orleans, and everything got shut down, and I missed out on it. It's like I could have just, you know, forced my way into getting a night off work, driven out there, and seen this band that I wanted to see more live than um, Power Man 5000. And I'm not entirely sure if that's correct. I mean, I had to think that to myself. But this is a miserably fun birthday single uh, from the hottest emo rock band out there. Because you've got Black Bell Brides, Three Days Grace, or maybe Avenged Sevenfold. Uh, my Chemical Romance came back, but I don't mean, they're not big anymore because they broke up. But, I mean, there's so many bands out there, and, like, this is, like, the, the new one. And they, last year, in 2019, they released their album, OK, I'm Sick. And that was one of the uh, most well-received albums by, by critics out there. And I haven't reviewed that one yet, and I definitely should, because I just got it on CD this year. God, I, I love that album. Even though it goes on about killing Donald Trump, it's still a great album. <laughs> uh, and then we've got Affluenza by Theory, or as... They used to be known Theory of a Dead Man. It, this is an insightful but sarcastic pop ballad that I'm actually glad to hear from someone for once in the music industry. And the reverb is just so sweet on this song. I, I'm kind of a sucker for that stuff, I have to admit. But when I, whenever I say I'm glad to, to hear this from someone for once, I mean that they don't usually write about you know where they came from and how it, it upsets them maybe that they see other people just you know cling to you know, popularity and um, it, it it spawns into you know spoiled kids that gotta bully someone because their parents aren't rich or some kind of crap. And I, I really appreciate the Riva Dead Man uh, once again writing about this kind of subject matter and other things on their new album. But I will admit, the album in itself is um, the music is just kind of crap. Now, the moment we all have been waiting for. What is JC's favorite song of 2020? This shitty damn year. Well, this is from some artists, some rock stars that I don't think we ever expected would be making music together, um, if at all, in uh, during this year or in the future. And so I didn't ever think they'd be coming back. And I'm not talking about ACDC, okay? ACDC's freaking whatever. They just go to the studio, make some music, and then release an album, and then everyone loses their shit about it. But my number one favorite song of 2020 is Ordinary Man by Ozzy Osbourne, featuring Elton John. <laughs> A collaboration between two legendary rock artists as their time runs out in their lives. And I'll have to go as far as to say that they earned this level of respect because Ozzy Osbourne was just like the king of metal for so many years. I mean, Metallica is great and all, but there's just something that's just beautiful about the metal that Ozzy Osbourne makes. And there's some fun stuff, some beauty to it, and they came before Metallica too, didn't they? And then Elton John, uh, or Sir Elton John, I regret not writing that there, he was knighted by the, the Queen of England or something at some point. But I mean, he just made some great rock and roll. I know him just because of all the the, the Lion King music and the, the soundtracks there. Some of those songs he had already written before and he adapted for the movie and other songs, I mean, there was a song that Nickelback covered that I didn't know was by Elton John. And it was just a fun rockin' jam. Not the Rocket Man. He's the Rocket Man. Sir Elton John, the Rocket Man. And them coming together to make this, uh, this piano rock ballet with the amazing guitar work and everything. And, um, you know, Elton John sings, and it's like he's got this old but strong voice. And then 
And Ozzy Osbourne just sounds like really, really miserable, like he's just beckoning to, to be remembered after all that he's done, in, in spite of all the, the, the bad shit and stupid crap that he's done. And he's like, yeah, he doesn't even know why he's still alive. It's, it's, it's heart-wrenching. I, I cried the song when it first came out because it felt like the career of just two rock legends was, was they were accepting their, their ending and this, this was them coming together and it, it's a perfect pairing. They just, they work so well together and it comes out all theatrical like a Shakespearean play that was never written. Well, uh, those were my favorite songs of 2020. Let me know, um, you know, your favorite song of the year and what your favorite song on this list was. Maybe it was in honorable mentions. Um, if you want to listen to all these songs, um, I'm leaving out the honorable mentions in the playlist though. You can go to the description and there will be a link to listen to all these songs from 10 down to one. Oh, gosh, I've been recording for an hour and 10 minutes, even though the video is probably going to be like 20 to 25 minutes. But, um, you know, I just really try to not ramble on too much and I probably did anyways, but, um, uh, Here's to having a really awesome 2021 for music. I'm looking forward to a Rise Against album. I think we're going to get one because I thought we would for 2020. If we didn't, we got one song by them. We're going to get one, 2021. I, I swear they said they, they were almost done with it or something too. And then uh, Shine Down, maybe Breaking Benjamin, Three Days Grace, those artists from 2018 and 2017. We should be hearing from them. And that's what I'm looking forward to. See you next time. That's that. And 2020 over.